to terrestrials and extraterrestrials alike. I am Kim, this is Dust Boats and Velcor, and today we're doing our February wrap-up video. So last month I read 14 books, and this month I read 5, which is less. But to be fair, this month I made 4 videos, and last month I made one, which was really at the very end of January, and so technically kind of was in February. So in February I made five videos. And if we're being entirely serious, it takes me longer to write, film, and edit a video than it takes me to read a non-Melvellian book. Also, my friend Allison and I did a rewatch of Veronica Mars, and that's three seasons in a movie, and so I blame her. Love you, Allison. <laughs> Excuses aside, on to the books! First to the block was Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. This is a delicious satire of the biblical build-up to the end of the world. The angels of heaven and the demons of hell are chomping at the bit for the Antichrist to set the end of days in motion. But it seems the demon in charge of keeping track of the son of Satan, getting him properly hellishly educated, making sure he's adequately fed, and clothed and tortured, well, he might have possibly misplaced his charge. It is a ridiculous, convoluted, merry chase to the very end. Next up, The Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. Levenseller follows the story of Alosa, the titular, daughter of the Pirate King, as she infiltrates a rival pirate ship by staging her own kidnapping. She is brazen and cocksure by day, silent and meticulous by night, as she searches the enemy's ship from stem to stern in search of a very specific treasure. Her only obstacle? The unfairly attractive and deceptively cunning first mate. If you like pirates, superstition, convoluted ruses, and some badass broads, this might just be the book for you. Third in line was The Bone Witch by Rin Shapeko. I've posted my full review here. Short version, when a young girl brings her brother back from the dead, there are some unforeseen consequences. This one is for all the lovers of high fantasy, dark themes, non-linear storytelling, and the lush tradition of Japanese geisha. Fourth is The Last Namsara by Kristen Sicarelli. It transports you to a world rich in mythology and follows the story of Asha, a young princess and dragon hunter, who bears both the scars of dragon fire and the scars of a decade of her people's malice. Betrothed to a man who delights in cruelty, her father gives her a secret task and will reward her with her freedom if she brings him the head of the first dragon. But the tapestry of her world the past, the present, and the truth is about to unravel, and Asha is the only one who doesn't see it coming. Asha's story is a tale of myths and traditions, of gods and heroes and monsters, and it's a story of love. And with a massive dose of psychology and politics in this book, how could I not love it? Last one, The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman barrels headfirst into an adventure more complex than I have ever seen before. Steampunk zeppelins, a fey mafia, detectives, dragons, a glamorous cat burglar. All these things come together in an alternate London as our heroes work to solve a murder and to find a book. The Invisible Library exists between dimensions, per se, and seeks to acquire books that are unique to specific alternate worlds. Irene and her new student Kai are agents of the library and seek only to complete their mission until they topple ass over tea kettle into this particular disaster. That's it, the five books I read this month. I am going on a mini vacation in March, so maybe I can get my monthly book average up a little bit. What have you read this month? Did you read any of the books that I read this month? Because I want to talk about them. <laughs> I don't know why that comes with this little dance. Let me know in comments, because I love talking about books. Mm -hmm. A bientôt. Mwah.